So I think a lot of people would look at buying this house as somewhat of a mistake, you know, given my age and the size of the house, not knowing if I really want to relocate or not, and everyone's going to have their own opinion, you know, and that's, that's fine, and, and maybe it was a mistake, it's a big financial commitment, it's a big time commitment to not only maintain, but to now sell, and there's a lot that goes into it, and maybe I got bad advice, or maybe it, there was just a lot going on in my life that I should have just taken a step back and really analyzed a little bit further, but... You know, none of that matters. It was on me. I made the decision, and I, I will face the consequences if, if there are any. That That's perfectly fine with me. But when you think about it, there's not too many decisions that you can make in this world that will ruin you forever, that you can't come back from. I think so many people get so caught up, and they dwell on a bad decision that they make, and it happens to all of us. You know, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Unless you go out and, like, kill somebody or you cheat on your husband or wife, things that you can't, you know, recover from. That's a different story, but in this circumstance, you know, it sucks at the moment, but it will all end up okay in the end. So, luckily for me, in this case, I'm a minimalist, and I don't have a whole lot of stuff I need to go through. I think everybody has, like, drawers of junk that, just like, cramp you don't need. I mean, why do we all hang on to this? I don't know, but I did find my initial job offer out of college, and at the time, I thought it was amazing. I was so stoked, and now I'm looking at it like... How did I eat, you know? <laughs> that was just three years ago, and it's, it's crazy how you, over the years you can keep progressing and progressing, and man, it's just nuts, man. So I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna hold on to that one. Who knows, maybe when I'm like retiring, I'll look back at that, like, what in the world were you doing, man? But anyway, I got a painter coming over here this morning. He's gonna touch up the baseboards and do a few things here and there, and also I have a few rooms in the basement. If you guys are OG subscribers, you remember that it was like two and a half years ago, the pipe burst in my basement and it just made a mess all over the place. Luckily, it was outside, most of it. So had the, they came in and they freaking chopped out holes in two walls because they didn't know how to get to the pipe. And I still have not fixed that. And that was two and a half years ago. You, you never have time to do stuff like that. And now it's kind of, uh, kind of uh, necessary. So he might do something. I don't know what he's going to do. Honestly, I'm telling you guys, this is a freaking process. All right, guys. We were headed off to possibly go make some bad decisions. The painters came and they left and long story. Corey's just bringing back any memories? It really does. Um, you know, it feels good to be, a, to be a bystander in this. So explain to the people what's about to happen. So, similar to the Corvette how to finish off a set of tires video, um, we are going to do it in that car. Absolutely ridiculous. We have way too much fun. We had two drones going. I had my camera. There's cameras strapped to both ends of the car. That was pretty cool. What do you guys think about that? I, you know, I don't even like cars, and that stuff excites me just because you can bring a camera. But I gotta get to the gym, and I'm dragging a little bit. I'm gonna take two scoops of prolific, two scoops of high volume. What I love about this stuff is that it can take you from not wanting to go to the gym at all. You take that like 10, 15 minutes later, and that's the only place that you want to be.
So I hate warming up, but I would say one of my favorite things to do in the entire world is drink caffeine, listen to hood rap music, and just walk. It's my favorite warm up ever. It just makes me feel so good, man. All right, I'm gonna go into the gym and I'm gonna start with 100 push ups. I've been doing that every single day for about a week, ever since Brad came to visit and he said, just do 100 every single day or do as many as you can. I shouldn't say I'm doing 100. I do as many as I can and I'm eventually gonna work my way up to 100. At least that's what I tell myself in my head and I try to add one at least every single day. Okay, so I plan on doing a complete upper body workout starting with some slingshot bench. I've never actually used this before, but I thought it would be a good tool for me to use with my shoulder injury because what this does is it forces you to keep your elbows tucked and I thought that that would kind of relieve some of that pressure, but unfortunately, it felt pretty terrible. It was kind of discouraging, you know. I, I thought it might be something I could implement, but it turns out it, it's really not going to be. And, and that's that's on me, right? I mean, if, if I really wanted the shoulder to heal up, I would take physical therapy more seriously. I would lay off lifting weights a little bit, but I'm just not willing to do that right now. So until, you know, I can't really complain about it until I actually do some of those things. So I moved on to some pulling exercises and I started with some dumbbell rows. And what I really like about this exercise is it helps engage my core. And I'm all about efficiency. So if I can kind of kill two birds with one stone so to say then I'm all about those kinds of exercises once we finished up with that we moved on to some lat pull down and I really like this especially with the with the wraps because I can really feel it in my lats and then we really after that just kind of did some fluff work you know as a, as a bro day more than anything just get some blood in the muscles but I love Sunday afternoon workouts and what better way to reward yourself after a semi decent workout I guess than go to McDonald's, what better post-workout meal? If these guys try to tell me the ice cream machine is down, I'm gonna fight somebody. Man, the lady in front of me just got a Happy Meal. How good does that sound? Nice parenting. Hey, thanks, are you my therapist? Take a walk. You want a Happy Meal? We'll get you one of those Happy Meals. You got a Happy Meal? Can we get a Happy Meal? Will somebody get the kid a Happy Meal? I'm telling you, I don't know what they put in McDonald's ice cream cones, but it's magical. How creepy would it be if I just sat here and ate this ice cream cone in slow motion? I'm not gonna do it because some of these weirdos out on the internet might like that too much, but eh. If you ever wanna get some really interesting looks, just try to take a selfie in front of McDonald's. So a lot of people still ask how I eat so much food without getting fat. Well, the secret is Brussels sprouts. For every Brussels sprout you eat, it takes out 200 calories from your body. So by putting about five Brussels sprouts on this Big Mac, it will be essentially calorie free. It's science, guys. I just, I don't have time to explain it to you. So I don't know if you guys remember, but like probably 10 years ago, these people tried to sue McDonald's for making their kids fat. And then they had the documentary, Super Size Me. And they're trying to blame McDonald's on everything. It's like, McDonald's made me do it. That mentality is so soft. That is, Absolutely asinine if you ask me and ironically enough I'm watching another documentary on McDonald's called the founder which has nothing to do with that But um, it's pretty good so far. I don't know I don't know that it's been an hour and a half of my time watching it again, but it's pretty interesting And if I could adv advise you guys one thing it is to take ownership just own it man I feel like this society it's like trying to blame everything for all their problems and it's like just accept the fact that everything is within your control. It's your responsibility. I think the one of the best books I could recommend to you, it's called Extreme Ownership. I'll put a picture right here. It is fantastic. Even before reading this book, it's kind of the mentality that I've always had. But if you read this book, I almost guarantee you that you will get something out of it. And I'll tell you a story. When I first started working, I remember we were going through, there's a big change in the business, and I was sending out this report. It was a day sales outstanding report. And what I had sent out was completely wrong, but nobody noticed it. So I don't even know if anybody looked at it, but the next month I, I noticed that I used the wrong set of data and everything was wrong. And I was like, crap, my boss is gonna think I'm an idiot. I've been here for like six months. And like I said, nobody even noticed it, but I went over to his desk, the controller of the company, and I was just like, <laughs> I was beside myself. I was so nervous, I was sweating. And I pretty much just told myself, I was like, you know what? I used the wrong set of data. This report got sent out and that that's on me right i mean that there, i shouldn't have done it i should have double checked triple checked and nothing bad happened right he was very understanding and, and it was perfectly fine i resent it out i explained what happened and i just made sure that it never happened again and i think if you kind of just approach things with that kind of mentality as opposed to well billy was over here talking to me so i couldn't focus on my job and i sent out the wrong thing and the excel wasn't working whatever you know it's like, no, just, just shut up, <laughs> take ownership, and move on with your day. Okay, I'm getting off my soapbox. We're gonna make some more food. 
So if you guys are OG subscribers, you remember the poverty nachos. Well, about a week or a week and a half ago, my buddy Brad put up a video. We tried to recreate them and uh, he really messed up because he used the nastiest soy chips. I mean, he likes them, but those things are just disgusting. So first, you wanna use pop chips. I don't really recommend these. I recommend the barbecue pop chips to use as your nachos. That just sets it off and that's what I use in the original recipe. And from there, the world is yours, my friends. Just add on anything that you want. Okay, so we got corn, we have this vegan meat, which is actually really, really good. And I will say, I'll give them a little bit of credit because at least Brad's lovely fiance, Aubrey, watches my channel because she did do the Greek yogurt and salsa, which kind of emulates sour cream, which I don't really like to be honest, but it makes the internet happy and I'm just here for you guys. So I really think when I sell this couch, I'm gonna advertise it as never being used. I mean, it really kind of just gets leaned across, but this, this was a great life decision. Okay, so last video I reviewed the sea salt caramel locale. This is the mint chocolate chip, which I can say I'm a lot more excited to try. Again, the consistency is a little bit different than Halo Top, but we'll see how they did. This is very, very minty. I just. Maybe it's just because I'm used to Halo Top. I just feel like the consistency is different, but taste-wise, they did real well with this one. Like, I feel like you wouldn't even have to brush your teeth for like two weeks after eating this. It's so minty. Luckily for me, I haven't brushed my teeth in two weeks. So it took me about getting halfway through, but it might be too minty. It's just, it's very strong. <laughs> I don't know. I like mint, but this is, this is a lot. Currently 8.13, this says I can only enjoy it until 8.15. You know what, McDonald's? You don't tell me how to live my life. I'm gonna sit here until 8.16, and then we're gonna eat this. We should play like the Jeopardy music. Or we should play Travis Scott. Want your apple pie? No, no, mama. I don't want that is the real Travis S. I don't want your apple pie no more. Oh yeah, I honestly think this tastes so much better than it would have tasted at 8.15 anyway. So if I die suddenly, I guarantee you it's because I ate this past 8.15, but very, very good. Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to watch. You could have been doing anything, anything in the entire world, and you chose to spend a few minutes with me. That is pretty awesome. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed it. It really helps me out a lot, and I look forward to talking to you guys next time.